The Hope Diamond and the infamous King Tut's tomb are associated with curses that have long troubled and even frightened believers worldwide. Read these curse is another, but this one has proven more frustrating than scary. And now, a team of researchers has dispelled this jinx once and for all, and in the process, has changed the field of optics as we know it. Hello, I'm Justine Murphy, and this is Light Matters for October 27th, 2016. Rayleigh's curse is one that has plagued the scientific community for many years. It has constrained R&D initiatives and posed diffraction limitations. But now, scientists have ousted this longtime frustration, proving that Rayleigh's is not a fundamental hex. Also on this month's show, LEDs will soon be lighting one of the oldest NASCAR-sanctioned racetracks in the U.S., thanks to a $5 million subsidy. And finally, we offer a wrap-up of OSA's 2016 Frontiers in Optics. But first, let's take a look at a 3D hand prototype and how biometrics researchers in Michigan are employing it for heightened security and safety initiatives. Biometrics researchers at Michigan State University, studying how to test and calibrate fingerprint scanners, have created a lifelike 3D hand model to test the accuracy of such machines, which are being employed more and more at banks, police departments, airport immigration counters, and even amusement parks. This lifelike hand model, complete with all five fingerprints, was created using a high-resolution 3D printer to reproduce the same ridges and valleys as real fingers. It has been used to test several fingerprint scanners, allowing a consistent, reliable, and repeatable way to analyze each device's accuracy. According to MSU professor O'Neill Jane, this is the first whole-hand 3D target able to calibrate fingerprint scanners. While the researchers anticipate the study prompting heightened security measures at places that use fingerprint scanners, they have also found a security loophole. A spoof 3D hand could potentially be manufactured with a person's fingerprints and ultimately assist a thief in using someone else's identity to commit offenses such as breaking into a bank vault, contaminating a crime scene, or entering places illegally. The researchers will now evaluate the spoof resistance of commercial fingerprint scanners, Jane said, which could ultimately help in the design of a tamper-resistant scanner. They foresee their work assisting agencies like the FBI, CIA, and the military. The study is funded by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Built in 1947, Martinsville Speedway in Virginia has quite a history with NASCAR, dating back to the league's establishment in 1948. This half-mile track was the first to host a NASCAR race and one of the first to host what is now the famed Sprint Cup Series. The track has come a long way since then, and now it's going even further. The International Speedway Corporation has earmarked $5 million to install LED lighting throughout the Martinsville track. It will be the first major U.S. motorsport track equipped with this technology. Ephesus, an LED lighting solutions manufacturer, will install its Stadium Series 750 LED professional sports lighting throughout the stadium and track. Specifically, the lighting will comprise multiple structures around the perimeter of the facility and the infield of the track. The new LED lighting will be in place by January, according to officials at Martinsville Speedway. These new fixtures should provide better illumination, greater flexibility, and more efficiency than traditional metal halide lighting, enriching the fan experience at Martinsville. This new lighting is also expected to enhance the quality of TV broadcasts for fans watching at home. The purported Rayleigh's curse is one that has been more frustrating than frightening within the scientific community. For years, scientists have met diffraction limitations in their work with optical systems. But now, a team in Madrid has broken the curse, making Rayleigh restrictions a thing of the past. The Rayleigh criterion, which is the universally accepted standard specifying the minimum separation between two incoherent point sources that may be resolved into distinct objects, limits the resolution of imaging systems such as cameras, microscopes, and telescopes. This benchmark restricts the minimum distance that can be distinguished with visible light on the order of 0.1 microns. Researchers at Complutense University of Madrid, in conjunction with a team from Palatsky University in the Czech Republic, has broken this restriction, reaching resolutions up to 17 times lower than those previously asserted. 
Their work demonstrates that Rayleigh's is not a fundamental curse and can be overcome with suitable measurements. The researchers generated two incoherent point-like sources in their experiments using a digital light projector that employs a digital chip with square micromirrors, each 7.6 microns in size. This provided precise control of the point separation by individually addressing two particular micromirrors. The digital chip was illuminated by an intensity stabilized laser that was equipped with an expander for a sufficiently uniform beam. These techniques surpassed traditional imaging in resolving two closely spaced point sources. The results of the experiments show that diffraction resolution limits are the consequence of traditional imaging techniques that discard phase information. With these findings, researchers at Complutense are calling for the reconsideration of textbook optics with Rayleigh's limit put into a broader context. Other groups of scientists have been working to dispel Rayleigh's curse, although using different techniques. The Complutense and Palatsky team is the first to achieve it. The research was published in OSA's Optica. The Frontier in Optics Conference took Rochester, New York by storm this month, marking OSA's 100th annual meeting. It also featured the Global Women of Light Symposium, which brought together a community of women from academia, government, and industry. Jia Xiao, an associate professor of optics at Rochester Institute of Technology and chair of WISTI Connect, an organization that connects female students, faculty, scientists, and engineers, and promotes female leadership in science, technology, engineering, and entrepreneurship, addressed the full room of photonics and optics students, professors, business owners, and government officials. As a female in a historically male-dominated industry, she has experienced her share of gender stereotypes. She noted associated challenges toward the start of her career, including feeling an instinctual need to defend her research and work. Also in attendance were SPIE CEO Eugene Arthurs, 2016 OSA President Alan Wilner, and Chad Stark, Executive Director of the OSA Foundation, all who shared their experiences with gender equality and offered varied perspectives. Several roundtable and panel discussions focused on obstacles and barriers, with people like Linda Bousset, a 30-year veteran research physicist at the U.S. Naval Research Lab, discussing how to overcome them. Put yourself out there. Go to meetings. Go to as many um, scientific meetings as you can, because when you present, you get people coming to you for your ideas, and you get um, experience with speaking. Um, Find yourself a mentor. And I've been very fortunate. I've actually had, I counted up, <laughs> four mentors, counting my high school physics teacher, um, in, in my career. And it really, really does help because you find someone who sort of guides you and helps you along the way and teaches you things that you may not quite have a perspective on because they're more senior to you. Bousset was one of a number of speakers of all ages, from students to longtime researchers and engineers. They represented organizations including the U.S. National Science Foundation, the U.S. Air Force Air Combat Command, and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, in addition to schools such as Rochester Institute of Technology, Columbia University, and City University London. Photonics Media Managing Editor Michael Wheeler also attended Frontiers in Optics. Thanks, Justine. Rochester, New York was a fitting choice for FIO this year, given the city's status as the home of the AIM initiative and a focal point in the development of integrated photonic circuits. In a plenary session, Mikhail Lipson, the Eugene Higgins professor at Columbia University, discussed breakthroughs in the past decade as silicon has emerged as a platform for high-performance optical devices that can be monolithically integrated with state-of-the-art electronics. Today, the toolbox of integrated nanophotonics is rich, she said, with the ability to modulate, guide, and amplify multiple wavelength sources at gigahertz bandwidths to optomechanical MEMS and nonlinear devices. Lipson also addressed the promise of graphene, which could open doors for silicon photonics beyond 100 gigahertz. In the years ahead, Lipson predicts that integrated photonics could transform quantum optics, fluidics, and neuroscience. FIO also played host to noted futurist and theoretical physicist Michao Kaku, 
whose presentation covered the role of optics in detecting gravity waves from black holes, energizing laser-powered starships, and unraveling the Big Bang. His predictions encompass inner space, or the future of the mind. Optogenetics is already helping researchers map the neural pathways of the human brain in the Connectome Project. And optics could also help unravel the greatest secrets of consciousness, potentially allowing us to upload memories, telegraph emotions, and even photograph dreams. So many years ago, we can actually photograph your thoughts. In fact, we can actually photograph a dream. Here's how you do it. You take the brain, put it in an MRI machine. The machine is so good that it analyzes blood flow in 30,000 locations of the brain. So we now have blood flow on the left of 30,000 locations. Blood flow corresponds to oxygen being moved around, which corresponds to neural activity. Then you put these dots into a computer. The software program chugs and chugs and then prints out a picture. These are pictures of thoughts. We can now photograph thoughts using physics. On the upper left is the actor Steve Martin. Below that is a, well, it's kind of crude, but the fact that we can do it at all is amazing. Pictures extracted from the brain. You can clearly see that you're looking at people, not animals, or animals and not people. And then when you go to sleep and you dream, it begins to print out crude photographs of what you are dreaming about. This is amazing, something right out of science fiction. And that's it for this month's show. If you haven't done so already, check out the redesigned photonics.com, which has been named a 2016 Folio Aussies Digital Award finalist. And be sure to follow us on social media too. Until next time, keep following the photons.